and then you people now come back on the channel start asking oh my hair is going away my my hair is falling out my hairline is receding i am starting to look like lebron james what can i do how will your hairline not recede how will you not look like lebron james if you are scrubbing your head with this thing tell me that's what i want to know i want to know please answer me somebody 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 answer me because I'm, I'm, that one is one of the ones that really blows me. Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Reed Alcolo. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you so very much for joining us. And if this is not your first time, thank you so much for coming back. It seems like a lot of you guys seem to like my hair videos. Um, one of my most watched videos is actually on how I was able to grow my natural hair um, really quickly. I know there's a lot of people commenting in that video talking about how they've been struggling with trying to grow their hair. So I was really thinking like there isn't any like magical fix or magical product like that can help you to necessarily grow your hair but there are things that a lot of you are doing to stunt your growth and to really prevent your hair from flourishing i am putting together a list of five things five today we're doing only five yes last time i did ten and a lot of you were complaining that the video was too long <laughs> i'm going to be talking about five things that i think you know the natural hair community and people in general with their hair are doing that's causing them to be bald and edgeless everybody want to you know big chop today and in three months have hair down their back it doesn't happen like that there are things that you can do regardless of genetics or not to really help your hair to flourish and to make sure that you are holding on it's called length retention that you are retaining as much of your length as possible i feel like i need to like have this disclaimer first off okay don't be triggered by this list please do not be, do not be offended if this if you're easily offended then maybe you shouldn't you know click to watch this video in the first place i'm being very serious because some of you might be hurt by some of the things i might say okay some of them you know i really got deep you know I, when i'm when i do these videos i like to write it down because i get so passionate about this thing okay some of you guys you are really causing yourself to be edgeless you'll be bored and edgeless for the rest of your life you'll go natural and you'll just be just be looking like pure scalp i just need to make that disclaimer okay don't be triggered and this is not referring to people who have alopecia or some genetic condition that is actually preventing them or preventing their hair from growing okay this is not obviously referring to those things um but some of the things on this list i used to do just zoom in just a little bit so y'all can see my cute face <laughs> five reasons you are bald and edgeless let's start off with an easy one first okay combing your hair when dry i will never understand this this one now i'm not talking about combing your hair after you detangled it you know and you need to fluff with in a style that's not combing i'm talking about literally yanking your hair you will continue to remain bald and edgeless if you use this thing to comb your hair this is not a comb you don't don't run this through your hair ever if you go to a salon and they do this shit run away run away don't even return back this is not a comb this should not you should not be running this through your hair like whatsoever you cannot run this through your hair and expect your hair to flourish and grow it makes no sense auntie please don't play yourself eh you don't want to comb your hair when dry it causes too much tension too much snagging and i know you hear those snags i know you hear your, you hear your hair strands crying out to you telling you to stop and you're still going you are going to be bald and edges you're going to see all the little pieces on the floor you're going to lose too much hair please even this is dangerous when your hair is dry okay you have to be very careful make sure there's some form of moisture some product on your hair before you go in and comb that's one reason why you are still bald and edgeless number two hey god now some people are going to be triggered by this one some of you are, are using, using toilet, toilet scrubber, scrubber. Toilet, toilet brush scrubber, scrubber. Eh? Come, come and, and brush, brush your edges, edges. Because, because of what because of what auntie toilet brush scrubber how is it possible this you can't use this shit to comb your edges. You can't use this to brush your edges. It just, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I know you want the slick edges. I know you do. But please, bore bristle. Bore bristle. 
Do not use the plastic shit that they be selling for, you know, 99 cents or $1.99 at the beauty supply store. It is dangerous for your edges. It is dangerous. It is, it is dangerous. You need to use a Bore Bristol brush. It's soft, okay? It's soft and it's gentle. If you want, you can even use like, you know those like baby hair kits? Um, and then there's like the little brush in there to brush the baby's hair. Use that. Use a toothbrush, you know, but not the hard toothbrush, not like the 99 cent toothbrushes that you can use to like scrub your Jordans. Not those ones, <laughs> okay? Please, just spend the extra dollar or two and get yourself your Bis Bristol brushes. These are soft. Like I've had this one for ages. These are soft and they're gentle. They don't pull out your hair. You don't want to pull out your hair. You don't want to pull out your edges. You know, you don't want to end up looking like some of these people, okay? Over time, if you continue to brush your hair with this, you will lose your edges. Your hairline will recede. You will be competing with LeBron James. Auntie, you can't do it. Don't do it. It's not fun. It's not fun, okay? No, guys. Bore Bristol only. Bore Bristol only on your edges. Number three, okay? This one is one that, you know, I got guilty of pre fairly recently in terms of my updos. I used to do my hair in um, a sleek puff um, pretty often, okay? Tight buns and tight updos will leave you bald and edgeless. Um, tight buns and tight updos, those will pull your hair out. And a lot of people don't realize it over time. It, it does really do a lot of damage, so you have to be really careful with how you are choosing to style your hair. Go um, edge free for one day. Like, don't have your edges sleeked down every single time. It really does make a big difference. Don't do a tight bun every single day. That will wear your hair down. Along the same line is, you know, with the tight hairstyles, there's the tight buns, the tight updos, but then there's also some of y'all that are doing these tight ass braids bruh bruh how do you even breathe how are you living how are you literally going to ray ray in the basement to try and get your hair done like okay not that there's anything wrong with people having side hustles and stuff but make sure you go to somebody who knows what they're doing okay the last thing you want is to go to a salon get some braids done or get get a hairstyle done and then your hairline is receding. You don't want that to happen. You need to see work beforehand. If the braid is getting too tight, like honestly, if they're doing your hair and the hair is, hair style is getting too tight, you need to speak up. Speak up or you will forever lose your edges. And even going to hair salons or hairdressers that feel that they need to blow dry and flat iron your hair before they braid it, oh my god be careful of those be very careful of those okay you don't have to blow dry and flat iron your hair in order to stretch it guys there's many different ways to stretch your hair without having to put heat on it constantly and it's a lot of heat sometimes they really be going in because yes of course you want the hair to be the hairstyle to be sleek and to last long but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to put that much heat on your hair to get that to happen so be careful with who you let do your hair be careful with tight updos tight braids tight corn rolls tight buns you know be careful of these things and that whole edge phenomenon free your edges a bit let them breathe let them live okay they don't have to be sleeked back every single time the next thing constantly having your hands in your hair will leave you bald and edgeless you cannot have a high puff today an afro tomorrow space buns the next day tight bun the next day corn rolls another day after that some senegalese twist the next day african braids the next day um shuku the next day all back another day uh -uh, come on how you don't expect to lose your hair? You're constantly braiding, you're constantly tugging, you're constantly pulling. If you don't leave your hair alone and just let it be for some time, you need to give yourself time between your styles. And even if you're just wearing your natural hair out, just wearing it out, you can't switch your hairstyles out that often. If you do that, you are going to lose hair. You are going to lose hair. You are going to lose hair. Like, I don't... There's no other way to go about it. Like, you're just going to lose hair. Your hair is going to fall out. Your hair is going to fall out. 
You know, even if you have long hair, your hair grows back fast, you will notice, you will notice your length retention reducing. You'll notice it, you know? So please, guys, be careful. When it comes to manipulating your hair, leave your hair alone once in a while, okay? You're not trying to be out here bald and edgeless. Now, the last and final thing, I think this is actually one of those ones that a lot of people don't realize is really important, but really contributes to people losing hair and not being able to retain length, okay? Your hair needs moisture. Everybody's hair needs moisture. I don't care if your hair is 2A, if your hair is 3B, 4C, or 10Z. Yeah, I don't care. Your hair needs moisture. So if you are not conditioning your hair, moisturizing your hair, and using the right products to do these two things, you are going to be out here bald and edgeless. Now, in my previous video, when I talked about how I was able to um, grow my hair out pretty quickly, I specifically talked about finding the right conditioner, the right moisturizer, the right products that work for your hair. Sweetheart, you cannot use everything that everybody else uses. All those natural hair beauty bloggers, you can't use everything they're using. You know why? Because you're not them. Your hair is different from theirs. Even if you have the same hair type, it does not mean that the, a product that works for one particular person is going to work for you, which is why I seriously recommend going back to the basics. For example, if you want to try out, okay, the Cantu Shea Butter Leave-In Conditioner. I talk about this product a lot in my videos because it works for me, okay? But the reason why I know I, I can use products like this or products with shea butter is because natural shea butter agrees with my hair. How do I know natural shea butter agrees with my hair? I've tried it out and I've tested it out. I use shea butter in my natural hair, okay? So I know my hair works well with this and my hair loves this, okay? Black Jamaican castor oil, it's the same thing. My hair loves this stuff. So that means products with black Jamaican castor oil, I can use it. Coconut oil. The coconut oil market is booming, okay? People think coconut oil is the solution for everything. It is not. I used to love coconut, coconut oil in my hair, coconut oil on my face, coconut oil in my, on my skin, bread. You, forget butter. Use coconut oil. You want to fry some fr coconut oil. You can use coconut oil for everything. I started taking the metro, like public transit, a lot more last summer. And I realized I would condition my hair, wash my hair, condition my hair oil. Let's say I did a co-wash in the middle of the week, and I would use coconut oil as, as my main oil during my, my, after my wash. And I would realize by the time I went outside and came back in, my hair was dry and brittle dry and brittle and that never used to happen so sometimes the products you need in your hair does change over time your hair is going to change over time and that's okay too you have to stop using those products if you once you see that the natural products don't work for you so i couldn't use conditioner um like the palmer's coconut oil conditioning pack that stuff smelled amazing it used to do wonders for my hair my hair hates it now because my hair doesn't agree well with coconut oil. So if, if you're feeling like certain products are making like, and coconut oil is making my hair dry and brittle, I would be crazy to continue using it, right? But some of y'all might have the same problem and you don't even realize it. That is not good. So you need to really sit down and see which products in the nat like the natural products themselves agree with your natural hair and then see whether or not you can switch those products out of your routine because some of the, the the natural hair products that are out there you know we keep seeing lots and more lines that keep coming out not everything is going to agree with your hair please seek out these ingredients themselves read the labels some of the stuff in there is not going to work for your hair and may actually be stunting your growth okay that's pretty much it for this video guys i really hope you did enjoy it okay i hope some of y'all are not too offended by some of the stuff I said okay and if you are I hope you can forgive me but you know I just wanted to inform something because some people don't don't know these things some people really don't know some people don't know that they need to really not that you know you can't just buy something because one person said it works you have to try it out for yourself but look at the ingredient list for example you know make sure that the natural ingredients themselves work in your hair before you go out and purchase the shea butter line or the castor oil line or the um, african black soap line or the coconut oil line make sure the ingredients work well for your hair before you buy them 
thank you so much for watching this video if you guys would like to see my you know a video on my hair journey and 10 tips i can give you on how i was able to grow my hair fast do click the video right here and you can enjoy the tips um, and tricks that i took to grow my hair out really quickly i really appreciate you guys stopping by do not forget to subscribe on your way out and i hope to see you in another video very soon until then stay blessed and stay golden